Hello, it's Dr. Ron Eaglin coming to you from Daytona State College, and this is CEN 3722, Human Computer Interaction. And today we're going to talk about learning and specifically how people learn systems. So let's look at what we actually want to learn today. Um, we are going to deal with humans learning how to use systems and how your design, the HCI, the human computer interaction elements of that, are going to help you facilitate that learning. So to understand that, you have to have a little bit of the understanding, or actually in many cases, a lot of the understanding of actually how people learn. So we're going to kind of delve into that today. Some of the things that we're going to learn, that concept of declarative and procedural knowledge, how we're going to learn through analogies, and how we're going to want to be able to move from declarative to procedural modeling, uh, de declarative to procedural knowledge, and be able to figure out how to use systems from that. So, your design will affect how users learn your system. It's not just a one-way street. The design affects the learning. The way people learn affects your design. So putting those two together and realize that unhappy users that can't learn a system are going to really affect the success of the system. So you want that to be a number one goal of what you're doing. So thinking about how people learn. Well, if, you, if you've ever observed people learning, you're going to find that there's a lot of different learning styles out there. Some people like to have somebody say, here's how you do it, and then they turn around and repeat the actions. That's the follow the leader type of methodology. Whereas other types of people are going to just simply want to jump into the system and just learn it as they go. And some people simply like to observe passively and try to absorb knowledge from that observation. Now, let's look at this concept of learning through analogy. All learning, all of the major higher level learning, you do based on things that you've already got in your mind, things that are already in your brain. You make associations between things that you need to learn and things that you already know. And that actually simplifies the entire process of learning. You can think, well, I've done it, I know how to do this. It's pretty similar to what I'm trying to learn. It can help me move forward. So as you gain expertise in the learning, the process really, especially in human computer interaction or dealing with interfaces, goes from the concept of declarative knowledge. Declarative knowledge is stuff that you know. You know that the city of Atlanta is in the state of Georgia. You know that there is a button on the monitor that ha says continue on it. Now, you have to have systems that allow the users to turn the declarative information into procedural information. Okay, procedural information is actually how they can use that to perform a task. So if you have a continue button on, on the monitor and you know how to use the mouse and click on it, well, now you've actually turned that into a procedural and on you go. Not a very challenging example, but one of the things that um, users are actually doing, they're moving from declarative to procedural. Or that you know that the city of Atlanta is in the state of Georgia, you can now figure out how procedurally to get from where you are to Atlanta because you know that you're going to have to move through the state of Georgia to get there. So that is part of the learning process. If you can keep a focus on understanding what elements are declarative and how those declarative elements can be strung together to create procedural knowledge, Okay, that's going to help your users learn to use the system. Now, as you get better, you start wanting to change the way that you do the procedural things that you do with a computer system. So for an example, a menu system, which is very common in all computer systems, pretty much a lot, almost all major programs have menus. The menus allow you to take the things that are possible to do and put them into logical groups. And a novice user will almost always navigate through the menu system because that menu system allows them to look at it, allows them to recognize, oh, here's where this is. But as you move forward in your level of expertise in using a computer system, you go to becoming an expert, you start abandoning the concept of using the menu system and start using the keyboard shortcuts instead because you want to move through faster. And you've made that jump of, I already know how the procedure works. I just want the fastest way to do that. So for a novice, 
cutting and pasting is click the cut button, okay, go to where you wanna go, click the paste button. But for an expert, it's select, control C, click, control V, done. Okay, it's very simple and fast for them. Now, understanding learning also means understanding the different processes of learning that are painful to your users. And learning is often a painful process. It requires you to hopefully exercise your brain beyond where your brain currently is. You're learning new things. So many of the things that will happen as users start to learn how to use systems is one, they, they encounter difficulties. They don't know how to do this. And they'll immediately turn and start blaming themselves. Oftentimes it's something you'll see very common. You know, I'm just, they're frustrated, but I just don't, you know, it's my fault. I don't know how to use the system. Okay. And in those cases, it often takes longer than you would expect for them to learn systems. But you need to understand and recognize that this is part of the process, but also try to mitigate that level of frustration by providing them the types of cues that they need to better learn how to use the system. Now, that could be based on a lack of basic knowledge or it could be based on just, I mean, many times it is. You know, having that prerequisite knowledge is very important. But oftentimes it's, you know, just simply not following the directions or not even reading the directions in the first place. You have a set of directions. So you really have to make it so the directions are inherent in the system itself. But if you're dealing with systems that require a certain level of learning, and you have users that ha are expected to follow a set of directions, be ready because the users will either not follow the directions or they'll follow the directions incorrectly or they'll be following the directions and then they'll verge off or they won't understand the directions altogether. All these things can occur. And in systems that can be relatively complex, these challenges can be pretty difficult for the users, especially if you've got things that don't have really solid background analogies in the user's mind. So you're looking at a relatively complex task with six, seven, eight, nine, ten buttons, which all do different things, which have very short descriptions. And unless they've got that prerequisite knowledge or unless they've got really good instruction to help them understand what are the results of the actions, they're likely to get frustrated by looking at the different types of things. So looking at the one, you know, this, this one here, this, the spelling thing, it, you know, it can be easy for some users and very challenging for other users. Another thing that happens is you know that the users are going to have trouble many times with different things that you've put into your systems. Okay. So you provide the help. Well, one of my favorite help, and this is right out of a help system, copy and paste. Copy. Click on the copy button to copy to the clipboard and paste. Click on the paste button to copy from the clipboard. Well, or to paste from the clipboard. Well, really? I mean, you almost have everything that you have in that help system in the words copy and paste. But if you don't understand the concept of a clipboard, if you don't understand the concept of selecting what you need to copy, if you don't understand putting the mouse where you want the actual piece to go in, that analogy is going to be still frustrating to the users. You've got to guide them through that. And at a minimum, the help system really needs to show them how this works. So let's take a quick gander at the individual stages of learning. So the cognitive process, getting in that, that uh, declarative and procedural knowledge, mostly dealing with the acquisition of declarative knowledge, this is this, this is this, this is what these things do. Developing the associations between button A, button B, object A, object B, okay? Understanding the relationships that are involved there. Then all the way going to essentially the autonomous level where you really don't even have to think about it anymore. Okay, so for example, when I'm copying and pasting between documents and I'm building something, it isn't really a thought. I have a quick control A, select all, control C, I've got it copied. I've, I click over with my other hand to the other one and I hit control V and it's done. Okay, literally within a second. It's an autonomous process. So understanding that that isn't where people start. That is where people end up, but how you get from that 
How do I understand how that copy-paste process works to making it an automated process? Well, at the beginning, you really want to keep the level of declarative knowledge that the user has to process small. As they get more and more towards the expert level, they've already chunked pieces of declarative knowledge into one piece. They don't think of each individual step as a single step. It all becomes one chunk, and that's actually important because that's less that they have to keep into memory. You can support both the novices and the experts. So looking at the overall picture that we have here of learning, and there was a lot that we covered here, and a lot that we're going to cover in even more detail in upcoming lectures, learning, the process of learning is really important to HCI, and that the users not only use your system, but they learn your system. To understand the learning of your system, you have to understand the learning. And even though we've only spent a little bit of time on learning, and it's a massive topic, obviously the concept of how people learn is a field unto itself. But just a basic understanding of the user must learn this is very important to you. And understanding the difficulties that they have and understanding the individual stages of knowledge and the different ways that they represent knowledge will be very important to end users. If you can get this, then you'll have happier users that are able to learn your systems. And remember, the user is the important one all the time. So if you got this, hopefully you learned something here. Dr. Ron England, signing out from Daytona State College. Thank you very much.